The Toyota Tacoma. Many people consider the Tacoma as the very best pickup truck ever built. It also happens to have an incredible reputation as being the most reliable car that Toyota has ever produced. But is that really true? Is there such thing as a bad Tacoma? There are good years and bad years, good engines and bad engines. But the worst Tacoma is still better than any other mid-sized pickup truck. Hi, I'm Greg, your car angel, and in this video, I'll go through each generation and break it down for you. Be sure to like and hit that subscribe button as it really helps me produce more content so that I can help you make the best decision on buying cars. If you watch my other Toyota videos, you know that I consider the 2002 to 2007 the golden years for Toyota quality. But for the Tacoma, it was actually 1995 all the way to the present. Other than a couple of very bad years, which I'll talk about later in this video, it has been a remarkable almost 30 year run of top notch quality manufacturing. Let me be clear that even though the Tacoma is considered to be the best built mid-sized pickup truck, I'm going to be very critical in this video highlighting all the weaknesses so that you know what problems to look out for when buying a used Tacoma. So let's start with the first gen Tacoma that ran between 1995 to 2004. This is a classic, both in terms of design, where it still looks great, and for its sheer reliability. This is the truck that set the standard, not only for all Tacomas to come, but also for all other competing pickup trucks. Still, no other truck has come close to matching the build quality of these little gems. They were almost perfect. It came with a small 2.4 liter engine, which did not come in the four wheel drive, and then the larger four cylinder 2.7 3RZ FE engine, which did come in a four wheel drive, and then you had the six cylinder FVZ FE engine, which is one of the best engines that Toyota has ever produced. Then came the second gen Tacoma, which is what this is, and it ran between the years 2005 to 2015. It had some really big shoes to fill, and fill them it did. A major redesign brought more of everything, more engine, bigger bed, more interior space, and many other upgrades to make the Tacoma a more comfortable driving experience. It was an instant success, and for many Tacoma owners, it is considered unmatched in many ways. This was a tremendous truck design with only one unfortunate flaw, and it was really a major one frame rust, or to be more specific, frame rot due to inadequate drainage. Now, Toyota settled a class action lawsuit and now will replace the rusted frame on all 2005 to 2010 models as long as it's within 15 years. A lot of those have gone out of date already. But if you're looking for a good used Tacoma, you have to narrow your search to a drier area on the planet. If it has rust, then you walk away. Some key things I look for on my Tacoma inspections and any other pickup truck for that matter is to see if the truck was used as a tow vehicle and if it was used off-road. Both of those will cause severe wear and tear on the engine, the suspension, and the transmission, all expensive items on the truck. I always first look at under the truck and check for rust, rock damage, on the rails especially, and back at the tow hitch, I wanna see a fresh tow hitch with no blemishes. A badly worn tow hitch is a badly worn Tacoma. The second gen Tacoma came with two engine choices, the cast iron block ultra reliable 2.7 liter four cylinder known as the 2TRFE. And it was near flawless with the exception of valve cover gaskets. And they're prone to leaking which really is an easy repair, but if left neglected, it could turn into a bigger problem. So always check that on the inspection. The larger engine choice was the 1GR FE 4.0 six cylinder. It wasn't a strong motor and not ideal for heavy towing, and it got terrible gas mileage, but it was very reliable. Overall, it was a very low maintenance engine, but it had problems with the engine mount supports. Now, if you're looking for a manual transmission, you have to know that the manual transmission had a problem with the release bearing shaft wear, which was specific to the 2005 model and only on the six cylinder models. 
The one often overlooked maintenance item on the six cylinder was the factory installed iridium plugs. They tend to fail at around 30,000 miles. You can always install platinum plugs and get around this, but you definitely want to make sure that they're firing properly. Other important maintenance intervals for the Tacoma are of course the oil changes. And if the owner was doing only 10,000 mile oil changes, I would walk away. 5,000 maximum intervals. Remember that the VVTI technology uses engine oil to activate the system and the oil must be clean to properly work. Dirty engine oil is the real enemy of the VVTI engine. Also, always make sure that the engine coolant and the transmission fluid were changed every 60,000 miles. For instance, if the transmission fluid is neglected, you will have torque converter failure. So that's a really important maintenance item on a Tacoma. The calipers on the Tacoma are a common problem, especially in the rust belt and wetter climates. They're prone to seizing and need to be kept clean. The rotor should turn freely on the inspection. Unfortunately, the Tacoma still had drum brakes on the rear axle and they should be inspected for rust. This is yet another reason to only buy from drier climates. The U-joints are a known weakness on the Tacoma. You need to check and make sure that there's no play within the joint, but also that they are phased properly. If the U-joints are badly worn or not phased correctly, you'll feel a vibration under acceleration. And speaking of the driveline, if you are looking at a four-wheel drive Tacoma, first of all, congratulations on that. If it were me, I would always go for the four-wheel drive version, if for no other reason than resale value. All Tacomas hold their value really well, but the four-wheel drives are exceptional. But there are a couple inspections that are specific to the four-wheel drives. The most common problem is the differential actuator. Now, if the four-wheel drive is not activated on a regular basis, the actuator will actually get jammed. If you have trouble activating the four-wheel drive, this is most likely the problem. It's located on the side of the transfer case. The 2005 and 2006 had faulty idler pulleys, which failed prematurely. The 2007 had seat heater wiring that was problematic. And finally, the leaf springs. This was a major recall on the Tacoma, and if they failed, it was a major issue. That's why there was a safety recall on those to fully replace them. Now, the way that you know if the leaf spring recall was performed is to go online and check the NHTSA website. That's the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and enter your VIN. Or you can simply look at the leaf springs itself. If there are three brackets, it means that they were changed. If there are only two brackets, then it's the old inferior setup. Inside the Tacoma, the interior of the second gen was durable with lots of heavy duty materials. The exception was seat wear, which constantly comes up on my inspections. It's primarily the heavily used driver's seat thigh support, which is the problem. And I found it can be easily repaired for less than $150 at an upholstery shop, but it is a weakness. The other thing is that Toyota never put good radios in the Tacomas and the Bluetooth feature really sucks. I would personally look to replace the stock unit with a good quality head unit and get better technology with your driving experience, including a backup camera, which is useful when picking up stuff from the lumber yard. The last thing I'll say about the second gen Tacoma is stay away from the super white color. Like all super white cars from Toyota of this era, they all had problems with major peeling and it was a mess. You also see that headlights from this generation get oxidized very quickly. You can easily buff them out using nothing more than toothpaste and a sponge, really. I'll share a link in the description below. The headlights themselves had a recall due to a light assembly falling apart. Now, fortunately, there are many aftermarket headlights to choose from, and they're relatively easy to replace. The 2009 Tacoma came equipped with side airbags, vehicle stability control, and traction control. And that was a big safety improvement over previous years. That's why I consider 2009 through 2015 as the very best years just because of better features. But all model years were really excellent in terms of reliability. The third generation ran between the years 2016 and 2023, 
and it was another attempt to make a great truck better. But for the first two years of production, it actually made it much worse. It's for this reason that I avoid 2016 and early 2017 models. If you own one and have good luck with it, I'm truly happy for you. But consider yourself lucky. The chances of having a good Tacoma from these years is rare. I could do an entire video on why you should avoid 2016 and 2017 Tacomas. And I'll spare you the pain of all that and jump right into the 2018 model, which addressed all of those weaknesses. One consistent problem that comes up on the third generation Tacomas is water leakage from the third brake light mounted right above the rear window. It's common to see leaks originating from this assembly, and if it goes on too long, it can create uh, a mess in the back seat. The fix is relatively easy, and there is an updated light that you can actually get with a proper seal from Toyota. 2018 was also the year that Toyota started using a special substance on the frame to prevent rusting, thankfully. The newest Tacoma came equipped with the Toyota Safety Sense package, better known as the TSS package. It is a host of safety features that came standard on every Tacoma. Now these features made the Tacoma a far safer truck, but it also made it much more difficult to modify or lift the truck. And that's why you should always avoid buying a lifted Tacoma from this era. The old reliable cast iron block 2.7 liter engine carried over to the new model and the old six cylinder was actually replaced with the venerable 3.5 liter engine, which was a welcome change. The newest Tacoma grew bigger in every way with more creature comforts than the previous generation. Less truck-like and roomier throughout. The interior lost the utilitarian feel in exchange for a more refined touch, but it was still tough. And now the latest 2024 Tacoma that has been totally redesigned using the TNGA platform. It's bolder, more modern, and a clean sheet design, which looks great. Under the new skin is an all new high strength steel box ladder design that is shared with the Tundra, the Sequoia, and the Land Cruiser. The newest Tacoma has a fresh iForce 2.4 turbo and it comes in a hybrid variation called the iForce Max with a whopping 465 pound feet of torque. Now Toyota does the best job at hybrid powertrains and the all new Tacoma sports the hybrid system well. The tough old 2.7 liter four cylinder engine and the six cylinder engines are no longer available in the US market. The newest Tacoma features a 17 inch screen that is loaded with camera technology and a really cool removable JBL speaker. It seems that Toyota finally sorted out the radio problems. It's loaded with many tasteful, well thought out features. This Tacoma might go down as the best Tacoma ever. It certainly has some big shoes to fill. I'm Greg, your car angel. Thanks so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.